All right, guys, so after kind of using the GH5S a little bit and uh, using them with the Vader lenses, uh, this is shot in the log format here, uh, the V-log v format. So it's uh, it's quite a bit flat. And if you look at the scopes here and look at these images here, uh, it's 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 very, the highlights aren't very high and the darks aren't very dark. So so yeah, we got a very flat image here. But we're gonna uh, I've uh, downloaded a, a LUT from uh, Panasonic's website that basically takes the V-log and converts it to what would be similar to a, a Rec 709. Uh, with uh, more contrast and a little more saturation in it. Uh, so so this is without really doing any color grading. I'm just adding this, uh, what's called an input LUT, which basically converts this from V-Log to what would be like a Rec. 709. So I'm going to add that. And if you're in, in Premiere, you can go to Browse and find the, the LUT that you've extracted and downloaded. Select that and apply it. I've already got it applied. I've already got it added in here. So I'm just going to select the V-Log there and apply it. And uh, what we end up with is a little bit kind of coolish shot. It probably needs to be a little warmed up a little bit, but uh, but a very nice looking shot here. And I've kind of applied these um, these gra this, these grades throughout a, whole, a few different clips that I've done here. Uh, but just like the clarity of the but just like the clarity of these images, though, I'm very impressed with. I think they look very very nice, very uh, very crisp and very very nice colors in this. Just let it place through some of the images here, so you can kind of see it with the LUT uh, applied here uh, on the, the what was the V-log. Uh, you get you see a lot. No, one thing I really notice is, especially in in darker areas, you do have a lot of detail left. Uh, you can still see detail in the darks. You can see details in the highlights, even like the clouds in the sky, even like the clouds in the sky. The sky uh, retains a really nice blue color to it, um, and even some the clouds. It, it, when I, I was a little bit overexposed here. I tilt up toward the clouds, and I did have a little bit of blowout here on the clouds, but not much. It still has some some decent detail uh, left in the clouds up here as it tilts up. Yeah, just like a little bit of peaking on my on my waveform over here, but for the most part, it, it maintained detail in the darks and in the highlights really nicely with that V-log. And one thing I noticed here, this this is what I did a test between the 8-bit color and the 10-bit color. So 420 versus 422. Just see what I'd get. And here's just and what I ended up doing is just get, got this shot just in my kitchen here and uh, and then zoomed up to the darks here, to the dark areas to see what sort of noise or artifacting I could see. On the left hand side, I've got the 422 footage and on the right hand side, I've got the uh, 420 footage. If we zoom up to this and look at it, uh, I'm not sure if this translates well going over YouTube because YouTube re recompresses items, but I can see in the 420, I can see some of that kind of standard like artifacting that's occurring on the right hand side. It's like almost like this ghosting artifacting where over here you just have just the regular grain and noise uh, that you normally get when you zoom up to an image. So yeah, but I can see kind of this ghosting and dancing around of compression where I don't get that as much over on this side. Hopefully that shows on YouTube and it it uh, you can see the difference there. Now I also want to go into uh, the camera settings and show you how to set up set up some tests that I did with the with the dual native uh, ISO. So let's go there and I'll show you how to set that stuff up. All right, I want to talk a bit about also the uh, dual native ISO function on the GH5, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then I'll be doing some shots uh, in in the dark uh, and see kind of how far we can push this thing before it starts. Uh, start, the image starts falling apart color-wise and with noise. But to enter the dual native ISO function, first of all, what you need to be aware of is uh, when you're working in V-Log, V-Log will only give you access, and it has to do with the dynamic range for being able to uh, maintain a, a higher dynamic range, will only let you, let's go to ISO here and show you, uh, Go the lowest you can go on your ISO is going to be 320, and then the highest you can go on ISO here in uh, when you're in V-Log is 25,600 here, 25,600. So if you want to get, if you want to push the ISO on here, and I'm going to try this, I'm going to uh, try shooting some shots in V-Log and push it, push it up as high as it'll go and see what the image looks like. I'm also going to do some tests uh, in in low light with the full expansion of ISO here, and let's show you how you do that. First of all, you're going to go into Menu. And you're going to go down to this little custom uh, wrench thing here, the C wrench there, and I'm going to arrow over to Exposure. And in here, you've got your ISO settings. If you scroll up to uh, right here to Dual Native ISO Setting Auto, uh, normally you can just leave these on auto. This either, if you put it on low, it will only let you go up to uh, 800 on your ISO. And if you go up to high, it'll only let you go down to 800. Uh, but if you do auto, it's going to have give you uh, open up the, almost the full range here. But what we do need to change is that we need to go back to need to go back to our camera here. Select that, and we're going to go down, arrow in, and we're going to go to our photo style. And I'm going to put this on something other than V-Log, so we'll no longer be in Log. I'm going to put 
let's go like natural or something like that. So it's, and once I've selected natural here, you get out of the menu, and now you go to your ISO. Your ISO allows you to go down to 160 as the lowest, which is going to be a very, very clean image, and it will go up to 51,200, which is pretty darn high. And there's the, and it doesn't stop there. If you want to uh, go into the menu here, after this, the image, I assume, is going to just be falling apart in the dark, but you're still going to see images. So, uh, so I'm going to go back down to my C wrench here, go over to the right, go under exposure. We're going to keep this on auto here, and we're going to go down to extended ISO and turn that on. And when we menu out of this, and we hit ISO, look what it's done. It's increased this, and now you're able to go up to 204,800, which is an insane level. Everything's just blown out here in regular light here. But when we start testing this in low light, I'm going to give that a test as well and see what see how that functions. But keep in mind that this is no longer uh, under vlog. This is uh, this is one of the LUTs, and I'm just under the natural, what's called the natural LUT here, and uh, that's going to open up that ISO range for me. So we'll give some tests on that. We'll come back and show you. Uh, the results. Now this is just me outside uh, running the camera, running a different ISOs. I'm going to play this back twice. I'll play this clip twice. You can hear me talking as I'm going through the different se ISO settings. And then I zoom up and then I'm going to plays through it again and shows the uh, settings with it zoomed up so you can really see the level of noise that you get uh, from these from these different levels of ISO. Hundred ISO. Let's go to sixteen hundred. There's sixteen hundred, thirty two hundred. This is just the street light here, sixty four hundred, twelve thousand eight hundred, twenty five thousand six hundred, fifty one hundred two. 51,200. Let's compensate by irising down here and see how much noise we've got. This is 102,400. And then this is 204,800. Hundred ISO. Let's go to sixteen hundred. There's sixteen hundred, thirty two hundred. This is just the street light here, sixty four hundred, twelve thousand eight hundred, twenty five thousand six hundred, fifty one hundred two. 51,200. Let's compensate by irising down here and see how much noise we've got. This is 102,400. And then this is 200,000, 204,800. Now, just so you get a sense of how dark it was when I was outside, I shot a little bit on my phone. I tried to kind of get the phone about to where my eye levels were, what I was just seeing with my plain eyes here. And this clip was from my phone here. Uh, so you kind of see, this was probably a little bit darker than, than what I was able to see with my eyes, but, but this was pretty darn close here. As far as the detail that I was able to see outside, this is how dark it was. This is just like, just almost past twilight here and everything on, the, on my neighborhood street was pretty dark. And then you look at just like like 3200 ISO, which is really, really clean, a really, really quick, clean look. Look how incredible that is right there. On, um, on most cameras, if you're shooting around 800 ISO, this is what you would get right here. So with 3200, this is a very, very nice, clean shot and looks very, very, and looks great. So in conclusion, uh, with, the, with the ISOs, it seems like right around 6,400, which is really impressive uh, if you think about it. 6,400 seems to have not very much noise in it, which was really, really nice. If you go to 12,800, it seems like that's really where it starts getting into that noise, into that noise level there. But then after that, it just starts breaking apart and you start seeing tons of noise and eventually it starts losing a lot of color uh, as well, especially as you get up into these higher, around 100,000. 100,000 ISO, uh, you're starting to lose all sorts of color in the image.
and especially around 200,000, you've basically zapped this of almost all, all but no, not all color, but you don't see greens in the grass anymore and uh, the color, and there's a ton of noise, but it's interesting that you can pump it up. It's an insane uh, ISO that you can pump that up to. This is almost, this is just like night vision. I mean, if you're still trying to just see something in the dark, this is the way to go. If you watch the whole series on the GH5S, thanks for watching it. Uh, These are just some interesting results. I'm going to be using this camera more in, in the future. And I, I, I really think if you're going to be doing some, uh, if, uh, just a small amount of lights and do like some short films or feature film or whatever we want to do, uh, this camera can be uh, quite, quite a powerful tool if you have some very minimal lighting. So I'm very impressed with it, especially if you're shooting some nighttime shots and you brought a couple of LEDs, you can do some amazing things with this camera. So, well, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please post them.